Hello there and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll talk about the forgotten stealth fighter that was created back in the 1980s by the US Air Force. The YF-23 is a legendary fighter for several reasons. An airplane in the National Museum of the United States Air Force's collection at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, south of Dayton, Ohio, proves that even the best designs can fall short. Let us see what more the YF-23 has to offer. Let's get started without wasting any time. The Northrop McDonnell Douglas YF-23 is a single-seat, twin-engine stealth fighter aircraft developed for the United States Air Force. The design competed against the Lockheed YF-22 for a manufacturing contract in the USAF's Advanced Tactical Fighter ATF competition. The YF-23 prototypes Black Widow II and Grey Ghost was built. In the 1980s, the U.S. Air Force began seeking for a fighter replacement, primarily to compete with the Soviet Union's sophisticated Sukhoi Su-27 and Mikoyan MiG-29 fighters. Several corporations submitted design concepts, with Northrop and Lockheed winning the competition. The YF-23 was developed in collaboration with McDonnell Douglas, whereas the YF-22 was developed by Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics. The YF-23 was stealthier and faster than its opponent, but less nimble. In 1991, the YF-22 was named the victor after a four-year research and evaluation process, and the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor went into production. The U.S. Navy explored utilizing the ATF's production version as the foundation for a replacement for the F-14, but those plans were scrapped later. The two YF-23 prototypes are now on display in museums. The ATF program was created to design a replacement for the F-15 Eagle air superiority fighter and counter the Soviet Union's Sukhoi Su-27 and Mikoyan MiG-29 fighters. After numerous corporations submitted designs, the Air Force awarded demonstration contracts to two competing teams in 1986. The Lockheed Boeing General Dynamics YF-22A faced off against the Northrop McDonnell Douglas YF-23A. The Northrop YF-23A, also known as the Black Widow II, was designed with stealth in mind, and the Northrop-led team chose not to use thrust vectoring for aerodynamic control, which was used on the Lockheed prototype to save weight while boosting stealth. The YF-23 was distinguished from the YF-22 by its distinctive design, characterized as having an almost pancake-like airframe structure with blended wing sections. At transonic speeds, its diamond-shaped wings were designed to reduce aerodynamic drag. With diamond-shaped wings, extensive area ruling profiles to minimize aerodynamic drag at transonic and supersonic speeds, and an all-moving V-tail, the YF-23 was an unusual-looking aircraft. For the pilot's visibility, the cockpit was located high near the nose of the plane. The aircraft had a tricycle landing gear arrangement with a nose landing gear leg and two main landing gear legs. The weapons bay was located between the nose and the main landing gear on the underside of the fuselage. A center stack and side throttle are located in the cockpit. It was powered by two turbofan engines, each housed in its own nacelle with S-ducts on either side of the aircraft's spine to conceal the axial compressors from radar radiation. The frontal profile of the inlets was trapezoidal, with unique porous panels in front that absorbed the turbulent boundary layer and vented it over the wings. The first YF-23, PAV-1, was powered by Pratt & Whitney YF-119 engines, while the second, PAV-2, was equipped with General Electric YF-120 engines. Unlike the YF-22, the aircraft had fixed engine nozzles rather than thrust vectoring nozzles. The YF-23's engine's exhaust streamed through troughs lined with heat-ablating tiles, the same as the B-2s to dissipate heat and shield the engines from infrared homing IR missile detection from below. A central management computer system was in charge of the flight control surfaces. The roll was achieved by raising one side's wing flaps and ailerons and lowering the other. The V-tail fins were set at a 50-degree angle from vertical. Pitch was primarily achieved by twisting the V-tail fins in opposite directions, causing their front edges to move closer or further apart. The tail fins were rotated in the same direction to provide yaw. The YF-23 outperformed legacy aircraft in terms of high angle of attack AOA, with trimmed AOA of up to 60 degrees, according to test pilot Paul Metz. Aerodynamic braking was achieved by deflecting the wing flaps down and the ailerons on both sides. To keep prototyping costs down despite the unusual design, a variety of commercial off-the-shelf components were employed, including an F-15 nose wheel, F-A-18 main landing gear pieces, and the forward cockpit components of the F-15E Strike Eagle. Possible Revival of the YF-23 Northrop Grumman proposed a YF-23-based bomber in 2004 to fill a USAF demand for an interim bomber, which the FB-22 and B-1R were also competing for. The PAV-2 was modified as a demonstration model for Northrop's projected medium bomber. 
With the 2006 Quadrennial Defense Review, which sought a long-range bomber with a substantially more extensive range, the idea of a YF-23-based interim bomber faded. Since then, the United States Air Forces have moved on to the next-generation bomber and long-range strike bomber programs. After the U.S. Congress refused to allow the F-22 to be exported in 1998, Japan began work on a domestic fifth-sixth-generation F-3 fighter. The Mitsubishi X-2 Shinshin testbed aircraft flew as a technology demonstration in 2016 after extensive research and the construction of static versions. By July 2018, Japan had gathered enough information to determine that the project would require international partners to finish. Northrop Grumman was one of the companies that responded, and there is talk that it may give Japan a modified version of the YF-23. YF-23 Pair of Prototypes Two YF-23 prototypes were built, each with a separate set of engines as part of the program's development phase, which included testing two experimental turbofan engines. The Pratt & Whitney YF-199 engines were installed in Prototype Air Vehicle 1 PAV-1, which was painted charcoal gray and unofficially called Spider or Black Widow 2, in homage to the Northrop P-61 Black Widow that flew during World War II. Prototype Air Vehicle 2 PAV-2 was given the nickname Gray Ghost after being painted in two hues of gray. A pair of General Electric YF-120 engines propelled it. Both prototype planes were incredibly fast and stealthy. The YF-23's low-profile and classified skin material on the airframe made it essentially invisible to radar systems of the time. At the same time, the supercruise function allowed the fighter to accomplish continuous supersonic flight without using the afterburner. It had a top speed of Mach 2.2. The YF-23 was equipped with a fixed 20mm M61 Vulcan 4 AIM-7 Sparrow or AIM-120 AMRAAM medium-ranged air-to-air missiles and two AIM-9 short-range missiles according to ATF specifications. It wasn't simply quick, it was also well-equipped. The single-seat plane was 67 feet 5 inches in length, 43 feet 7 inches in wingspan, and had a wing area of 900 square feet. The YF-23 comes in a close second. The YF-23 and the YF-22 were found to be extremely evenly matched. The highest speed of the YF-23 was 1,451 miles per hour, compared to 1,599 miles per hour for the YF-22. But the Northrop design had a more extended range and a higher ceiling, with a maximum range of 2,796 miles and a ceiling of 65,000 feet. The YF-22 had a 2,000-mile range and a ceiling of 50,000 feet. The YF-22, on the other hand, had a clear advantage in agility, which is crucial in a fighter plane. The YF-22 Lightning II later renamed the F-22 Raptor when the Lightning II designation was reused with the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter simply outperformed the F-22 Raptor in a dogfight, and this was enough to convince the Air Force that it was the superior of the two. Russia must panic if it is true that the U.S. plans to wake up this beast fighter jet. This is a stealthy jet that for sure will cause an impact on enemies of the U.S. That's it for today's video. Hope you liked this one. If you do, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Comment down below your thoughts about the YF-23. Thank you.